the Fairy Firefly is a tier 3 carrier born fighter that is capable of being one of the most underestimated aircraft in the game in regard to its designation as a naval interceptor. This reputation can be attributed to the first impression most pilots get when they look at the Mark 1 variant, which has its engine cooling system built around the nose of the aircraft, giving it a British tea and crumpet may may approved derp face that draws attention away from its potential to colonize everything on site for king and country. This guide will focus on the derp since it shares most of its flight characteristics with the later Mark V variant, both of which should be researched and enjoyed since the next aircraft in the fleet air arm line can go eat shit. Starting with the power plant, the Mark 1 Firefly is equipped with the almighty Rolls-Royce Griffin V12 inline engine, which can generate a maximum of 1600 and some odd horsepower, and thus should theoretically bring the derp to a maximum speed of 315 miles per hour at around 4500 meters. <laughs> However, it struggles to do so since it carries our good friend and co-everything man Nagel sitting in the radio operator's greenhouse behind the fuel tank that is behind the annoyed pilot who has to take him everywhere even on runs to the nearest land-based supply depot for a restock on Earl Grey. Now we move on to armament, which happens to be a quartet of the glorious 20mm Hispano Mark IIs, of which you get over 640 rounds of high explosive hard tack to fire at anything that moves in your general vicinity. Be aware however that these cannons tend to act like auto shotguns in their stock configuration, which means you should keep your convergence closer than you usually would. A maximum of 400 meters is best, until you get the upgrades. But let's save that discussion for later like a good pasty from your woman at home. Unless you're a lonely, unfulfilled virgin with no social life. Going into flight performance, the Mark 1's handling at low to mid altitudes is smooth but heavy, requiring rudder assistance when performing combat roles. On the other hand, its turning capability in the heat of battle is quite excellent thanks to its unique Youngman flap system which in combat settings resemble Yunker's doppelwing flaps like the ones on the Ju-87 Stuka dive bomber. This means as a fighter, it flies defensively, as it will always be at a speed disadvantage, and therefore running away from enemy fighters like the last three that have been covered is basically impossible. Therefore, turn and burn tactics are the order of the day, in which you use the flaps in conjunction with well-timed and calculated turns that cause your pursuer to lose their firing solution and force them to make a pass and either attempt to outmaneuver you, or fly up and away, to get to a better position to try again. However since the Firefly is quite the fat bastard, it cannot sustain a maneuver fight for very long before it loses too much energy and becomes an easy target for the no fun police to dive in and promptly delete you from the battle. The Firefly can also carry stones and rockets into the fray with a maximum load of two 1000 pound stones or 8 RP3 rockets which makes it one of the best fighter bombers for the British at tier 3 for combined battles. And of course, may I remind you to set a delay fuse timer on those big stones before deploying. Otherwise Nagel will suffer a significant emotional event that does not need any further explanation. Since this is a carrier based aircraft, we must talk briefly about proper takeoff and landing methods. This is an example of a proper takeoff. This is an example of a good landing. This is an example of an okay landing. This is an example of a workable landing. And these are examples of fucking up. And dying in an undignified manner. It's now time for the boring game meta stuff known as modules and crew skills. First and foremost, you must unlock new belts. 
since the British cannons in particular suffer horribly from a dreaded disease called stock syndrome, in which the combination of stock belts and cannons makes for near wrist slitting levels of sparking which can be exasperated by poor trigger discipline and marksmanship. After the belts, go for radiator and the first set of new cannons in that order, in which then you have a choice between going for the rest of the performance or weaponry mods, with a hard on focus for the 42 and 43 cannon mods which increases the mean time before failure by 300%. And don't forget the survivability mods. For logistical services, make sure your crew chief has the spare parts, to repair the aircraft and of course tea, biscuits and alcohol to keep the repair crew happy, and working at top speed. For pilot skills, it's the usual stuff, but it wouldn't hurt to put some points into keen vision, which means lots and lots of carrots for you, and Nigel to share, no take backs. As for differences between the Mark 1 and Mark 5 models, the 5 gets an upgraded engine, clipped wings and its cooling systems are now located in the wing roots, along with a 4 bladed propeller. As for armament, its cannons are now the shorter barreled Hispano Mark V's with the same amount of ammo, along with more useful combination ordnance options and zero point mountings for the RP3s. And this is how you fly the ferry firefly. Now, get out there, and show everyone the power and glory that is his majesty's royal fleet air arm.